Good day, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on Introduction to Network Devices, Part 2. Today we're going to discuss some security network devices, and then we'll move on to some optimization and performance devices. And with that, let's go ahead and begin this session. And we will begin by talking about security devices. First up is the firewall. Now, a firewall can be placed on routers or hosts in that it can be software-based, or it can be its own device. A firewall functions at multiple layers of the OSI model, specifically at layers 2, 3, 4, and 7. A firewall can block packets from entering or leaving the network. And it does this through one of two methods. It can do it through stateless inspection, in which the firewall will examine every packet that enters or leaves the network against a set of rules. Once the packet matches a rule, the rule is enforced and the specified action is taken or it may use stateful inspection. This is when a firewall will only examine the state of a connection between networks, specifically when a connection is made from an internal network to an external network, the firewall will not examine any packets returning from the external connection. It only cares about the state of the connection. As a general rule, external connections are not allowed to be initiated with the internal network. Now, firewalls are the first line of defense in protecting the internal network from outside threats. You can consider the firewall to be the police force of the network. Then there is the intrusion detection system, the IDS. An IDS is a passive system designed to identify when a network breach or attack against the network is occurring. They're usually designed to inform a network administrator when a breach or attack has occurred, and it does this through log files, text messages, and or through email notifications. An IDS cannot prevent or stop a breach or attack on its own. The IDS receives a copy of all traffic and evaluates it against a set of standards. The standards that it used may be signature-based. This is when it evaluates network traffic for known malware or attack signatures. Or the standard may be anomaly-based. This is where it evaluates network traffic for suspicious changes. Or it may be policy-based. This is where it evaluates network traffic against a specific declared security policy. An IDS may be deployed at the host level. When it's deployed at the host level, it's called a host-based intrusion detection system, or HIDS. More potent than the intrusion detection system is the intrusion prevention system, the IPS. An IPS is an active system designed to stop a breach or attack from succeeding in damaging the network. They're usually designed to perform an action or set of actions to stop the malicious activity. They will also inform a network administrator through the use of log files, SMS, text messaging, and or through email notification. For an IPS to work, all traffic on the network segment needs to flow through the IPS as it enters and leaves the network segment. Like the IDS, all of the traffic is evaluated against a set of standards, and they're the same standards that are used on the IDS. The best placement on the network segment is between a router, with a firewall hopefully, and the destination network segment. That way all the traffic flows through the IPS. IPSs are programmed to make an active response to the situation. They can block the offending IP address. They can close down vulnerable interfaces. They can terminate network sessions. They can redirect the attack. Plus there are more actions that an IPS can take. 
The main thing is, is that they are designed to be active, to stop the breach or attack from succeeding in damaging your network. Let's move on to the Virtual Private Network Concentrator, the VPN Concentrator. Now this will allow for many secure VPN connections to a network. The Concentrator will provide proper tunneling and encryption depending upon the type of VPN connection that is allowed to the network. Most Concentrators can function at multiple layers of the OSI model. Specifically, they can operate at layer 2, layer 3, and layer 7. Now, outside of internet transactions, which use an SSL VPN connection at layer 7, most concentrators will function at the network layer, or layer 3 of the OSI model, providing IPsec encryption through a secure tunnel. Now let's talk about optimization and performance devices. We will begin by talking about the load balancer. A load balancer may also be called a content switch or content filter. It's a network appliance that is used to load balance between multiple hosts that contain the same data. This spreads out the workload for greater efficiency. They're commonly used to distribute the requests or workload to a server farm among the various servers in the farm, helping to ensure that no single server gets overloaded with work requests. Then there's the proxy server. A proxy server is an appliance that requests resources on behalf of a client machine. It's often used to retrieve resources from outside untrusted networks on behalf of the requesting client. It hides and protects that requesting client from the outside untrusted network. It can also be utilized to filter allowed content back into the trusted network. It can also increase network performance by caching or saving commonly requested web pages. Now that concludes this session on the Introduction to Network Devices Part 2. We talked about some security devices that you may find on your network, and we concluded with optimization and performance devices that may also be present. Now on behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session. And I'm sure I'll do another one soon.